Hi there. So I'm standing here today uh, by what I call the driveway containers. And this is another example of what I think sort of sums up the word for this year, which is pivot. pivot. You know, so many things have happened that nobody really saw coming and we've all just had to do our best to adapt. And more than I would have cared for, that's what I'm finding in my garden this year too. We've had all sorts of sort of crazy things happen in the garden. So, you know, the best laid plans have to be changed. So that's sort of the case here. Now, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know that for many years now, I have grown uh, roses as the centerpieces in these two containers. Um, I don't know how long I've been doing that. I'd have to look back, but um, it's been quite a while. It's pretty much since we had our driveway paved that I put these here. And they serve as a nice little um, division between where the driveway apron ends and the patio begins. And um, I've been successful more years than not in growing those roses, but there have been a few times in which something odd happens with one of the roses and it's happened again. So one of the roses flushed out beautifully. Everything looks great. Um, it's doing wonderful. The other rose has nice fat buds on it, but they have frozen in place. In fact, a couple of them have even started opening up into leaves, but nothing has changed in weeks now. Now I have had this happen before and I've had this happen with roses and I've had this happen with other things. And I believe this might be a vascular issue. And I think it's caused by massive fluctuations in temperature. And I don't think it has much to do with how I'm storing these in winter, which is in our unheated garage. I think it has more to do with reintroducing them into the world. You know, they're in that dark garage. It's not, there's no wind in there. I mean, the set temperature is more or less the same, but there's no wind involved in it. And then I bring them out here and this year I did a really good job of protecting them um, so that those buds wouldn't get fried because I've lost plants that way too. Um, I think actually what did this plant in was the big cold snap we had, um, the late freeze that so many people dealt with, even though I had it protected. Um, I think it was already struggling and then that just sort of did it in. And I believe this is a vascular problem, at least that's my understanding of it. And so what happens is the stems have enough energy and sugars in them to push those buds, but the plant is just pooped out and can't make those buds go any further. And I actually lost a Venus dogwood in this same way during the polar vortex um, two years ago. So in any case, I actually think this might be one of those things that is ultimately for the best. Um, I had visions of those roses getting to be big, three foot tall, full bushes. And they have never done that in the entire time. And I, and I think that's partly because they're being grown in a container, partly because this just isn't the perfect place to grow roses. It doesn't get super hot here. Um, we have a short season. It's just not a natural place, I think, for roses to do well. At least that's been my personal experience. And I think these super cold springs that we have um, and long, sort of long drawn on cold springs are not great for roses either. So perhaps this is a blessing in disguise. So what I've done is I've tossed the other rose. Um, the rose that was doing well, I have transplanted to another container that actually is um, in a nice bakey sunny spot. So hopefully it will do well there. And I'm going a different direction with these containers. In fact, I'm going to a tree, a small tree, but a tree. So I'm going to be planting pagoda dogwoods uh, in these two containers. Pagoda dogwoods, I actually have two of them growing um, at the driveway, what I call the driveway garden, which is the one that we did a couple of years ago. Um, and they're doing well there. There's a little bit of deer browsing, which is interesting because it's supposed to be deer resistant. So that's a little bit of a lesson. Um, that will be much easier to control here. The closer you get to the house, the less the deer are a problem. Um, but they're uh, a very nice uh, sort of wider than taller uh, tree. And they do get I mean, eventually they can get fairly big. They can get, I mean, they're saying um, 15 feet tall by 20 feet wide. Um, that would be an extremely mature pagoda dogwood. And certainly it's never gonna be an issue when you're growing it in a pot. Growing things in a pot naturally keeps them smaller. There's just less room uh, for the roots to do their thing. Um, if by any chance these ever got so big, I, I will tell you, I love pagoda dogwoods. I think they're beautiful trees and I'd be happy to transplant these just about anywhere in my yard. So um, hopefully this will work. 
So today we're going to be putting in uh, pagoda dogwood on each side. These are multi-stem trees. Um, one of them has more stems than the other, and I might cut one of those stems out to sort of air it out a little bit. Um, interestingly, when I pick these up at the nursery, there is a little bit of sign of some uh, freeze damage in that, in them. So I will probably just, um, they'll be fine. It's just on some of the tips. And I don't think, even though there are buds on it, I don't think there will be a great bloom on these this year. Pagoda dogwoods want to be moist, but they want well-draining soil. So actually in a container, that's a little easier to actually manage than it can be in the landscape sometimes. It's just a matter of, I'm gonna to have to stay on top of watering these to make sure they are watered regularly. So I've already got these pots filled halfway with the Organics Mechanics container soil and a bit of the biochar mix. And I'm gonna pop these in and then we are gonna do some annuals around the bottom. Um, I am gonna also put in a little bit of plant tone, a um, little bit of fertilizer in here to get these going. So as you can see on the bottom here, uh, we're quite a bit of root, these are pretty root bound. So I'm gonna, I am gonna break that up. I'm not gonna root wash these um, because they're already quite leafed out and they're going into a, you know, a little bit of a stressful situation here, so, but might need to get a knife to do these. By the way, I got these pots at the Restoration Hardware Outlet several years ago. And when I got them, they were sort of a pale yellow color. And I have a post on the blog from what I did to them, which I'll put in the description. But basically I, raw, I sanded them and then I stained them with regular old wood stain. And the color of these pots right now is exactly, um, I haven't touched it up since then. So this has been several years and they look great. I'm really happy. It's faded out a bit. I kind of like the color that it's faded into. So, so if you find some pots that are a good deal, but you don't like the color, um, don't pass them up necessarily because it can be changed. That urn in the middle of the garden behind me also was a different color when I got it. And I also stained that with wood stain. I don't seal it or do anything. I just do the stain, let it dry, and then have at it. And it seems to work fine. I, uh, I will say investing in good pots is a decision I have never regretted. Anytime I've spent money buying a good container, I've always felt it was worthwhile. I, you know, a good container should last you forever basically unless there's a terrible accident and big good looking pots I find to be extremely difficult to find so I think if you find one that you love that will work for you it's a worthwhile investment now there's a good chance I put too much soil in here so see if we can get this figured out So what I'm doing right now is just taking a little bit of soil off the top because this was buried too deeply in the pot, which is super common. And that's why all these roots are popping out the top. So you just want to scrape down to get to the, what they call the root flare, which is where the trunk starts. You don't want it to look like a stick. You want it to be sort of flaring out a little bit and all right, how does that look? Of course I can shift the pot if need be, but I want the width to sort of go that way. Eventually it will spread out all over. Okay, I think that looks pretty good for the height. Now I just need to top it up. Now because I'm planting some annuals around the edges here, I am gonna put some fertilizer in there. Um, Unfortunately, I'm very low on it right now. So I have to make what's in this bottle stretch for two containers. Um, I will probably have to go back and add some more. 
So this is just a slow release fertilizer. Um, and then of course there'll be liquid fertilization as the season goes on. So we're just alternating two annuals here. The first is this blue sky lobelia. There's not a lot of flowers on it. They've actually been cut off, but you can see these beautiful um, blue flowers. They're almost iridescent. They're so good. They do very well for me in this spot. I know a lot of people have problems with them, but these new ones seem to be very heat resistant and they've always bloomed really well for me. So I love those blue flowers. I can't get over it. And then I'm using um, a variegated uh, licorice plant, uh, Helichrysum. This one is called uh, Splash. And I did this because this year I'm adding a lot of silver foliage plants to the annual border that's right by this. And I thought this would be a way to get that chartreuse color. These aren't colored up great yet, but they have this chartreuse edge on them. And then they have kind of a a slightly greenish grayish center on them and I thought this would be a good way to work in the chartreuse of the Nicotiana that I tend to plant all over the place and the gray of the foliage that I'm going to be working in. You know, it's funny how things work out sometimes you think something bad has happened it turns out to be actually a bit of a blessing and that might have been the case here. I had no intention of replacing those roses this year um, but already I see these trees in these containers and I like it much better. I think the height was needed here and I think all along I was anticipating that height in the roses and it just never happened. So maybe this was all meant to be in the end. How's that for a pivot? pivot! I hope you're making the most of whatever's happening in your garden today. We'll see you soon.